Hello everyone, it's Sam for the Football Network. Before we get into this episode of Super Sociedad, I wanted to apologise that this episode is pretty much a month late. Um, basically, I made the silly decision of A, starting the series uh, knowing that the following week was going to be the festive period, so there's pretty much no time to record then, um, and ran into so many technical difficulties to the point where I had to pretty much rebuild my entire computer um, in order for everything to actually work properly. It has, we've got this episode, and as a special kind of apology, um, we're going to have a double upload. So, two hours after this episode goes live, we're going to get the third episode and um, the game in that fixture. But before that, of course, we have this second episode to come, so I hope you enjoy it. Hola a todos, welcome to the second episode of Super Sociedad. Of course, the main event of today's episode is going to be the game in La Liga against Sevilla, our first of the season. Away at the Ramon Sanchez. Before that, we've got to talk about pre-season, how that's went, and the transfers in and out of the club. Let's talk about pre-season then. So, started off with a 2-0 win against the under-19s, pretty standard stuff. Then we drew tall against Bayern Munich in their trip to the Anoeta. And this game was, this performance was pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the performance. Um, we stood toe to toe with the German champions for 90 minutes. You can see Lewandowski's 90th minute equaliser. The only thing sparing a medium-ish result for Massimiliano Allegri's side. So I'm pretty happy with the performance there. Um, obviously can't look too much into that in terms of looking forward for the season. But it was a good sign of our preparation. Then travelled to Monaco. Beat them by two goals to nil. A very good performance there. Um, dominated the game. Limited them to pretty much zero shots. Dominated that nicely. Travelled to Stoke. 1-1 nil. But got absolutely hammered. Um, they were the better team. And by the end of the end of the match. They could have been 2-1 up. To be honest with you. Um, so not a good performance there. Things did slightly look up, at least in the first 45 minutes. We travelled to the Stade Velodrome and beat Marseille by two goals to one. The first half was a very, very dominant performance. Um, but the second half, by the time Morgan Sanson got uh, Marseille's one goal, they could have been level, if not ahead. They really took control in the second half. Um, didn't pick up much when we travelled to Nice. Drew nil-nil, but much like the game against Stoke, got absolutely battered. Um, it was not a good performance whatsoever. And to be honest, if it weren't for Igor Zubadia putting in a couple of crucial blocks, we probably would have lost this game. Vieira side probably feeling a little bit hard done by. Final game was against Agropoli, a semi-professional Italian side in David's testimonial. 1-2-0. Um, no. Of course, David is leaving us at the end of the season once his contract expires. So this is the beginning of his farewell tour for Sociedad. Um, so yeah, nice to nice to begin that. Let's go forward then um, to talk about transfers. So two players have come in, a couple of players have gone out. So the two in first, Ezekiel Palacios, um, signed from River Plate on initial loan, and the transfer will be made permanent for six and a half million pounds at the end of the season. Now he's got a thirteen million pound release clause, so we've managed to half that price, which I'm very happy with. Got a decent amount of value, um, but. I am absolutely over the moon that I managed to get this deal over the line. Um, Palacios is a very, very good creative player. I used him a little bit in FM19 and thought, I, thought I'd try and see if I could try and sign him. Of course, he played a, um, a decent part in helping River Plate reach their second consecutive Copa Libertadores final. And although they were denied by a late break from Gabby Gol, um, I thought he did okay in that final. So I thought, you know, I'd, I'd see if I can sign him. And he was absolutely ecstatic to come and play for us. Um, contract already been agreed, of course. £20,000 a week, uh, £90 million release clause. And if I remember rightly, next season he'll be playing as a squad player season after regular starter. So plenty of room to grow into, um, into life in San Sebastian for Ezekiel Palacios. And I'm just ecstatic I've got this over the line. He could become our key player in the future. He's got a lot of ability um, and hopefully he can end up fulfilling that. 
The other player we signed was Nicolo Armini, alive, arrived from Lazio for £800,000. A couple of clauses that we'll go through in a second. Um, now, Armini was signed, was brought to my attention by one of my scouts. I was looking for kind of promising young players. Uh, was brought to my attention that he was on a youth contract, thus could be purchased, um, and only compensation paid to Lazio. So I thought I'd go in and snap him up. Um, some of his attributes are really, really good for a player of his young age. 15 for heading and tackling, 14 positioning and 13 anticipation is really nice for a player of his young age. And he's a very athletic um, young player. So I'm very happy to have him on board. He and Palacios have both played throughout preseason and done all right. Um, Palacios had a really good game against Monaco. Um, but obviously, they're going to need time to settle into life at Sociedad. So, obviously, we're going to give them that time. That's why, of course, they're on, you know, um, playing time-wise. They've got plenty of time and we're going to allow them a lot of room to, as I say, just settle into life at the club. Uh, speaking of those clauses, I should mention, um, so Lazio will be drew 300 grand, pretty much 300 grand, um, for his first appearance for Italy. 26 grand for the next 40 La Liga appearances and 15% of the profits made on his next transfer. Hopefully he won't be making a transfer and hopefully he can fulfil that sizable potential he's got um, and we won't have to sell him on. Um, So yeah, that's uh, Nicolo Armini. Uh, Four players have gone out. So Robert Navarro has gone out on loan. Uh, Ike has gone out on loan. Uh, Elizondo has gone out on loan. They were all due to signing new contracts in which they wanted to go on loan to improve their development. Uh, the other player that's gone out on loan is Ando Guevara, who's gone on loan to Las Palmas for the season. Um, the decision to send him out on loan was mainly due to the fact we obviously had Palacios coming in. There was also the fact that um, I- Igor Zubadia and uh, Isi Iramendi pretty much have that defensive midfield um, slot on lockdown if one of them gets injured uh, Mikel Merino could step in and play so there wasn't really going to be any room for him to play also he's not a desperately good defensive midfielder for La Liga um, he's he's all, he's pretty decent for the Segunda division but not for uh, the top division of Spanish football um, so this is probably the last time we'll ever see him you never know he might end up having a really good season in Las Palmas um, and develop massively as a player and may come back and end up being worth putting in the first team but it's unlikely so that's all the transfer activity for this season um all that's left to do really is get in to uh the game against Sevilla at the Ramon Sanchez they are slight favorites for this fixture um so the line that we're going to go with is Moya in goal Zaldua Elizondo Loriente and Monreal in the defense Iramendi Porto and Merino with Odegaard Oyathabel and William Jose a couple of things to mention about the lineup first Moya I mentioned in the first episode how I was leaning slightly more towards Alex Ramiro as our starting goalkeeper um Moya's just been better in pre-season so I thought I'll go with experienced head and hopefully um he'll wheel uh, provide a good um, player for at least uh, this game. So we'll have to see, obviously, those two battling for the number one spot. Um, Zaldu is the other player who I had, I had a lot of reservations about this guy in the first episode. I don't know why. He's done really quite well over preseason. Um, his work rate has impressed me. His willingness to do his uh, duties in the attacking third really have also... Um, pretty much nailed him down to start over Gorasabel. Also, he's obviously a better player than Gorasabel at the moment. So definitely will be keeping spot as things stand. Um, also, Odegaard starting out on the left, on the right-hand side, excuse me, over adding Yanazai because Yanazai has been basically complaining. Uh, I mentioned in the first episode how I was a little concerned that Manchester United had an £18 million buyback clause in the original deal that brought him to San Sebastian. Um, they activated that a week and a half into the window, but he rejected the contract. Presumably not wanted to go back to Manchester United because he didn't think he was going to get game time, which is fair enough. Um, now, following that, Liverpool came in with a bid. Uh, that bid was a £20 million. Pounds. Yeah, £20 million. Pounds. He's worth £28 million, pounds, but has a release cost of £52 million. That offer is, as far as I'm concerned, disrespectful. Um and also, I have no financial reason to let him go for anything less than his release clause. If a club want him or any of my players, they will pay the release clause. 
Jan Lazar was upset about that though, so handed a transfer request. Um, and at the start of this week, actually missed training. So yeah, he's been sulking ever since. Um, hopefully though, we can get to January um, with him in a better mood. But he's on the bench at the moment just because you know he's such a good creative player. I couldn't really afford to leave him out. Uh, joining him on the bench will be Romero, Gorasabel, Lenormand, Zubedia, Palacios and Isak. Um, also, something I should mention actually on the Yanazai front is that every single player in the squad is against Yanazai and happy with how I've dealt with the situation, which is a good little sign. So let's get forward into this first game of La Liga against Sevilla at uh, the Ramon Sanchez. Sevilla, of course, a very, very good side. Um, lots of um, attacking intent in their lineup, as you can see here. So Munir, Nolito, Ronnie Lopez, Vasquez, Jean Jordan, and this guy, Nemanja Zude, perhaps? We'll just call him Nemanja because I don't want to butcher that surname too much. Uh, Region, Carrizo, Gomez, and Jesus Navas with Va uh, Vaklik. Is that how that's pronounced? Thomas Vaklik in goal. Um, uh, Bunu? Bunu? Perhaps, I, again, I struggle with some of these names, as you can tell. Uh, Escudero, Oliver Torres, uh, Darbo, Ocampos, Diego Carlos, and Luke de Jong uh, are the rest of Sevilla's lineup. So, first game of La Liga. Um, I'll say I'm expecting a win because, as I said, while preseason's been good, preparation's been good, um, obviously can't take too much away from the Bayern Munich result and the Monaco result especially. Those were good performances and show what we can do against um, sides that typically are um, of a higher stature than ourselves. So we're starting the game and Munir's gone right through. Moyes done well to clear the danger, but that was an early, very early warning sign of what uh, that midfield play is going to be from Sevilla. It's going to be whipped in by Ronnie Lopez. And it's headed away for now by Porto, but still in possession for Sevilla. Jordan, Nolito. Nolito goes for goal. Moya has it calmly in his arms. Experienced goalkeeper is, at least as I said for the moment, going to be our first choice. If he has a, a, um, a run of shockers, then I may look to drop him and replace him with Ramiro. But we'll have to see. So we're kind of 10 minutes in. And goal kick from Moya. Elisondo. Elisondo out to Zaldua. Zaldua looks in field to Mikel Merino. Porto. Porto out to Odegaard, who's beaten his fellow Real Madrid low knee, Sergio Reguillon. The Norwegians beating him on the inside. Goes for goal. Great save by Vaklik in the Sevilla net. A really good run by Martin Odegaard. Really done well to beat Sergio Reguillon. Whipped in by Odegaard. Headed away for now by Vasquez. Porto collects, though. On the edge of the box, Porto trying to find some support. Odegaard. Odegaard into Diego Rolente Rios. And that was it. Um, the other game, so Levante lead by a goal to nil through Coque. Um, Celta lead by a goal to nil. Barcelona lead by a goal to nil. Not much in terms of uh, the way of goals in the first kind of approaching half an hour of the opening uh, La Liga weekend. So we're going to potentially... You know, going to half time fairly level pegging, um, but they've got a chance here. Gomez off the corner that was delivered to him by Ronnie Lopez. Gomez, Ronnie Lopez on the left hand side goes for goal and hits the side netting. That was a, a good chance from the Portuguese that he could have done a lot more with. Moya, goal kick rolls out to Elisondo once again. Elisondo, Zaldua. Zaldua's got Odegaard in front of him, goes for it. Porto. And perhaps William Jose is going to make the run. No, goes for Marino instead. Iramendi. I see Iramendi looking for a couple of options. He's got Zaldua. Odegaard's making a run ahead of Martin Odegaard. And he goes for him. But William Jose is not in a decent position to receive the ball and go for goal. That click had that all covered. Uh, Oyasabel was making a, a run eventually at the back post. But not a great bit of timing from our um, star man. Ball's whipped in. Headed away by Nolito. It comes again to Martin Odegaard. And Odegaard beats one man. Still coming inside. Porto strikes, hits the first man. Merino, Oyathabel. Back to Merino. Mikel Merino once again back to Oyathabel. Just trying to find some space. Trying to find a killer ball in. 
Well, Athabel, he's got two men in the box if he can go for him. Can't hits the first man, and Ronnie Lopez can get away and potentially cause a counter-attack for Sevilla. But Odegaard beats Franco Vasquez in the air, and we lead by a goal to nil through William Jose. A brilliant, brilliant bit of pressing from Martin Odegaard to beat the experienced Franco Vasquez in the air and head it down. So this was it. It hit the first man. Ronnie Lopez tried to get it away and tried to play it into Franco Vasquez. On his weak right foot, it must be said, Odegaard does really well. And the first time strike from the Brazilian Villian Jose. And we lead by a goal to nil at Ramon Sanchez before just before half time. And that is the perfect way I would have wanted to go into half time. Um, the half time stats, I mean, we've done better with our chances. We've had ever so slightly greater number. They've had more of the possession. Um, but what I'm more concerned about is that we've not completed a sufficient number of passes. 83% is still okay, but not what I would want from this system. We've been great in terms of our uh, tackles one and headers one. We've been much, much better in terms of the headers one. Um, so that's one upside there. So I think things are going well. Um, I'm going to say guard against complacency because I think... Who's that? It's Nacho Monreal. Um, I'll say... Hmm, I mean, he was okay. I say he weren't bad, but I think you've got what it takes to be better. Um, I will also say that for um, Oyathabel because he, he was arriving very late in the box for, from a couple of runs. Martin Odegaard did really well in that first half. Um, I'm happy with his performance there. And that's 6.3 from Mikel Moreno. He's not done well at all. Um, not happy with you at all, Mikel. So, second half underway. Uh, we lead by a goal to nil. That goal obviously coming uh, five minutes before half time from um, Villian Jose after a brilliant bit of pressing from Martin Odegaard. Jose's got the ball back here, early point in the second half. Oyathabel back to Nacho Monreal. Monreal lays it into Diego Llorente Rios. Iramendi, Merino, Oyathabel. Villian Jose is canny. He might want to get into a better position. Lays it off a poor two. Ah, oh, simple save for Vaclik. It was a decent bit of work in the attacking areas for us. Um, so, uh, goal kick led to Elisonda once again. Zaldua, a lot of workers coming down that right-hand side. Ball forward again through to Martin Odegaard, but couldn't quite get the head of Carrizo. Uh, Vaclik spreads it back out to Region on the left-hand side. Now Sevilla have got a chance to come forward. Portis had to drift wide to cover for Martin Odegaard. Franco Vasquez, good block there by Iramendi. Porto, back to Iramendi, spreads it to Martin Odegaard. Now Odegaard's going to look to put it back to Elisondo. He's got Saldua making a big run down the right-hand side. Finds him, he's onside, but there's not a, there's no options in there for him. Saldua, unless he's going to go all the way and wait for support. Saldua did a really good run from the right-back. And he's going to spray it forward there from Sevilla and... Uh, Lorente and uh, uh, Elizondo had that covered. Uh, so get creative because I think we've we're looking on the front foot at the moment. We're looking like the better team. I mean they've they've had one or two um, chances, but overall it's all fallen to us. But of course that all can change in a moment. This is uh, top division Spanish football. Jesus Navas bringing it in field. Is Porto going to make a challenge? No, he's not. Region. He's got Odegaard's put. Uh, Bit of pressure on him make, makes him put him back to Nemanja. Now Jordan, Jean Jordan looking for a bit of space finds Region making a run just outside of the box, cuts inside, ball across. Ronnie Lopez, good shot, it was blocked well. Vasquez couldn't get for it, and now Erdogan to bring forward after receiving the ball from Porto. But Villian Jose again coming quite wide to provide some support, but I think Erdogan just wants to run. Region does very, very, and Nemanja even does very, very well to get across. And make the challenge. Um, again, Mikel Moreno has not been good whatsoever. Um, can't do another shout just yet. I'm expecting a better performance from him. He's got the he's got the ability. It's just whether he can be consistent enough. Uh, once again, Elisondo goes out to Zaldua on the right hand side. They sort of for Porto. Now Moreno. Moreno onto Oyathabel. Oyathabel to Villian Jose. He's got a couple of men closing in on him. He can use uh, Monreal on the left hand side. He does. Now Nacho, Nacho Monreal closing in. Porto strikes and that's 2 0. And Porto, a man who I said in the first episode is probably the most likely to lose his spot, 
has come up with a big goal on his Real Sociedad debut. And we're up to fourth, 62 minutes into the game. And we lead by two goals to nil. A really nice bit of work by Nacho Monreal down on this left-hand side. And drills it into the box. And a good volley on, I believe that's Porto's weaker foot. Or a, I have a feeling that's his... Um, oh, no, it's a, it's a stronger foot. I had a, something in my head that that was his weaker foot. But it's a very good strike by uh, Porto. Uh, still, I think... I think we'll demar do one more shout towards Mikel Marina, but I think I might start to bring him off at some point. He's not been fantastic. Uh, also, more I want I want to see some more from Oyathabel because he's, he's our star player. We should be demanding consistent good performances from him. Um, obviously, it, it, along with that means we're having to we might have to fend off a lot of uh, advances from some bigger clubs at least at the moment. Anyway, uh, Elisondo and Iromendi passing it between themselves now. Back to Lorienti, back to Elisondo. They'll do it out on the right-hand side. He's got Odegaard ahead of him, but doesn't provide him much support. Elisondo back to Martin Odegaard. It's a big ball over the top to the Norwegian. Can he keep it ahead of Oregon? Yes, he can. Zaldua, free kick. Odegaard whips in the box again. And Iramendi, oh, great save by Vaklik to deny us a third. And Lorienti has given the ball away. Uh, right, so we're kind of in the 80th minute. Substitution time. Um, I think I'll bring off Mikel Marino because he's not been fantastic. I'll bring on uh, Ezekiel Palacios, play him as an attacking, as an advanced forward. Um, try and get a little more, try and get him involved in the game. Keep Porto in that in that ball playing. Uh, maybe I think if I start playing and I'm going to do a tad further forward and deep line playmaker, maybe we'll get one or two additional chances. No um, room for Isaac to play today, but it, of course he is a young player and he will get a lot of opportunities to play for this side. So Alessandro from the free kick. 4-0 Barcelona, I've just seen that top corner, my word. Iramendi, Zaldua. Back to Iramendi. Iramendi pings it over the top for William Jose. I believe he might have been in an offside position. And that was blocked well. Uh, was that offside? I... I, I only saw him when he started making the movement um, just before, as the ball was in the air, so he might have been onside. It was probably likely Erdogan whips the ball into the box. Oriente gets there. Oh, over the bar from the former Real Madrid man. Really, really well done from the corner. He did everything well but the finish. And we're closing into the final few moments of the game as we lead by two goals to nil. They've got a chance from a corner. Will they get a consolation goal? Lucas Acampos gets there and it's over the bar. That has been probably Sevilla's best chance of this game to get a goal. And that's going to be probably, this is going to be, be the final highlight. Oliver Torres knocks it away by Mikel Oyatabel, throwing for Sevilla. And that's it full time. We win 2 0 against Sevilla. A very good performance. Um, second half, we really picked it up. Uh, in all the metrics I want to be performing well in, uh, that's much better than it was in the second half. A lion's share, um, or equal share of possession, sorry. We have the lion's share of the shot, much more clinical uh, in front of goal, and very good performance. <laughs> it's a goal's got a lot, my word, across the league of the rest of today. Two um, uh, high-scoring games, 4-0 for Barcelona, 5-3 between uh, Arroyo's Athletic Bilbao and Granada, my word. So a good, solid performance there. Um, so I'm very pleased with that performance I think definitely the man of the match Villian Jose was very good performer in that first half goal was crucial made a couple of good movements Odegaard made a couple of really good runs um, very happy with the performance of the team so that will be the end of this first episode uh, or first game I should say of the season uh, second episode of, um, of, of the series of course we're going to come back in next week for the game against Real Madrid at the Santiago Bernabeu. Big game, of course. We've got a lot of history with Real Madrid. Um, and hopefully we can get some positive results against Granada, against Valladolid, against Atafe, and against this, um, against Osasuna, who I kind of one of our uh, Basque-ish rivals. Of course, not as big a rival as uh, Bilbao, but still a bit of a derby there. So a couple of kind of sides that we should be beating based on that performance against Sevilla but of course there's a long long time to go left in the season 
Um, so yeah, we'll come back for the game at the Santiago Bernabeu as we visit Real Madrid. But that's it for the second episode of Super Sociedad. I hope you guys enjoyed. And until next time, all that's left to say, Sam for the Football Network signing out. Somos la Sociedad.